Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just start the video by saying that I'm not part of the boxing establishment. I'm not an insider. I view myself as an outsider. I haven't been a judge. I haven't been a manager. I haven't been a boxing promoter. I have no plans to be any of those. I'm just a fan. And like most fans, I have a day job. I used to be a transactional attorney, a litigator. These days, I'm doing a lot of divorce work here in Silicon Valley because a lot of people are getting divorced in Silicon Valley, right? And I'm really just a fight fan who enjoys gambling. I sell picks at DwyerVIP.com, and I interact with fans on a host of sports, boxing being one of them, right? So I'm really not in the industry. I'm more a guy who goes to the local pub and talks with people about sports events. So I hear from fans. My agenda is not to get a better deal for my fighter or to get money from a corporate sponsor who might be interested in sponsoring a fight. My agenda is simply to beat the casino. But I need to have people recognize that. I'm a lay person. I'm not a boxing insider. Now, there are times when we, the boxing public, at the pub talking about a fight, have a good faith disagreement on a fight. And the video is a bit inconclusive. Right? Recently, I'll name a couple of those fights. Bernard Hopkins, Joe Calzaghe. You do have those who believe that Hopkins won the fight. You can argue all day. You could sit with the film in front of you. And people are going to have a good faith dispute on who won the fight. Right? One that still gets my craw is Daniel Gill, Darren Barker. Same type thing. There's the Gill crowd. There's the Barker crowd. Historical fights. Leonard Hagler. As I mentioned the names, I am positive that there are at least 40% of you who feel that the wrong guy won that fight, right? George Foreman, Jimmy Young. Now, in the entire time that I've been here on YouTube, and it's been a few years, there has been no fight where the public seems to be on one side of the fence and I'm on the other side of the fence more than Timothy Bradley versus Manny Pacquiao the first fight right for some reason and I'm not sure what it is right because to me the view on this fight is clear for some reason there's some belief dare I say consensus that Manny Pacquiao dominated the fight I understand that there are many Harold Letterman among them who believe that Manny Pacquiao dominated the fight online here right the guys on YouTube seem to believe that Manny Pacquiao dominated the fight if you look up the fight online on public sites like Wikipedia you're gonna see polling it's either Wikipedia or box rack where they poll a bunch of people and everyone seems to believe that Manny Pacquiao dominated the fight. I'm here to tell you a couple of things. First, right, I expected Timothy Bradley to win the fight. There's a pre-fight video up here. And in my opinion, Timothy Bradley won the fight. But more importantly, more importantly, 
what I want people to do here, because I don't want to just talk in the dark, is I want people to look at a video of the fight. If you have a video, I hope you share it with friends. Just a tip, you could Google the video. There's actually a site that has the video here online. What I want you to do is to go back and look at that video. Now, it'll surprise you. Because fights aren't what they seem. Fights are an expectation game. If you go into a fight thinking Manny Pacquiao is vastly the superior fighter, then your eyes might lie to you as you're watching close round after close round you're gonna be trying to tilt it toward the guy you like instead of scoring the round the way it was now in the tradition of one of my favorite people in sports of all time Howard Cosell let's try to tell it like it is there was a fighter in the ring that night who had a off night that might shock people to know that the person who had the off night was Timothy Bradley. Understand, Bradley, on an off night, in my opinion, beat Manny Pacquiao. My prediction for the second fight is that Bradley picks up where he left off. To the Pacquiao people, tell me, which of the last three rounds did Timothy Bradley lose? I'm not even going to talk about those rounds here. I'll encourage you to not only look at the fight, but look at the judges' scorecards for those last three rounds. We're not going to talk about those rounds. What I'm going to do is focus on six minutes of the fight. The first two rounds. Okay, understand, the HBO team that night is Emmanuel Stewart, the guy who I admired greatly. Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman. Right? That's the announcing team. I'm here to tell you, you need to watch the fight both with the audio and without the audio. The reason why Timothy Bradley had an off night is because he sprained ligaments. This is fact. He sprained ligaments in his left ankle at the end of the second round and couldn't push off the way he wanted to for the rest of the fight. You want to know how bad the sprained ligaments were in his ankle? By the way, he also hurt his right foot. Sometimes you have on the wrong shoes and it doesn't hit the surface the right way. But understand, his left foot was so damaged by the end of the second round that he showed up to the post-fight press conference in a wheelchair. Right? Understand, his injuries are confirmed by MRIs. So, what I want you to do is to look at the first two rounds of the fight because I believe they make the case for Timothy Bradley winning the rematch. Now let me just say, the first round comes out. Understand who these fighters are. Timothy Bradley is balanced. Right, let's get outside of foot speed, hand speed. Let's just look at the balance of the fighters. Timothy Bradley is balanced, right? Whether he's throwing a left hand or a right hand, he's steady. Okay, he's steady. Manny Pacquiao, by contrast, is herky-jerky for a reason. The reason is, from distance, he's one-handed. So what he's trying to do is to hide the times when he's going to load up on a straight left hand. Right? Manny Pacquiao, for all the speed, for all the jumping around, 
from distance is just a straight left hand. He's a southpaw. So what you have here is a fight where Bradley is standing even keel. He has, simply put, the superior balance. He's standing in front of Manny Pacquiao and he's jabbing Manny Pacquiao. Look at the first round. He comes out, he's jabbing Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's jumping around, right? Jumping around the ring, right? He's herky-jerky. And Pacquiao is trying to get off a straight left hand. Now, for balance reasons, understand, while some guys can lead with power shots, Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion, cannot. There's a tell on his punch. And the tell is his right hand. Right? He needs to throw a right hand, even perfunctory, because he's not accurate with the right hand. Right? He needs to throw a right hand or hint at a right hand, have it somewhat extended, before he comes back with his pile driver straight left. That straight left is one of the sport's best punches. That straight left has put down many a guy who you would think of as having an iron chin. But understand, if you neutralize that straight left, you neutralize Manny Pacquiao. Right? There's nothing else there from distance. I know up close, he has a short right hook. Knocked out Ricky Hatton with it. But understand, from distance, it's a straight left. Let me also point out, too, that up close, the fight's not competitive. Timothy Bradley is a much better fighter up close than Manny Pacquiao. Right? So, what you have in the first round is Timothy Bradley dominating the first round for the first at least 2 minutes and 30 seconds. At least. Right? He's out there dominating the first round. He comes in. This is when he's healthy. He comes in behind a jab. He's shooting the jab. It's accurate. Manny Pacquiao is bouncing around. Throws some left hands. Bradley makes them miss. It's at the end of the round, the last 30 seconds, that if you believe Emmanuel Stewart and Jim Lampley Manny Pacquiao lands three straight left hands that hit the mark that win him the round. Right? That's how it's televised on HBO. The feed I want you to watch is the HBO feed. Right? The argument is not that Manny Pacquiao dominates Timothy Bradley for three minutes. But that Manny Pacquiao lands three telling punches at the end of the round that win him the round. For those of you who don't know the other side of the argument, let me give it to you. I saw the left hands Manny Pacquiao threw at the end of that round. Timothy Bradley rolls with each left hand. Rolls with each left hand. He's not staggered. He's not dazed. He's not confused. He has dominated the rest of the round. As I see fights, he already had the blueprint based on the first two and a half minutes of that round on how to beat Manny Pacquiao. Right? At the high level, dare I say, it's not that complicated. If you have the tools Bradley has. Bradley has the foot movement. Bradley has the reflexes. Bradley has the defense. If you have those skills, most fighters don't. Most fighters aren't mobile like Pacquiao. 
Most fighters aren't as balanced as Timothy Bradley. If you have Timothy Bradley's skill set, you should beat Manny Pacquiao. So, I know I'm sounding like a kook. I'll let the chips fall where they may. Understand, there was someone in the arena who had a vested interest that night in Timothy Bradley winning the fight. And that's his corner man, Joel Diaz. You know I believe in good trainers. Let me just tell you what happened at the end of the round. I believe if you need to know one thing on this fight, one thing, I believe it's what Joel Diaz tells Timothy Bradley at the end of the first round. Understand, Emmanuel Stewart, another trainer, I disagree with him here, Emmanuel Stewart and Jim Lampley have given the first round of Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao comes back to his corner. HBO catches the exchange. It's on tape. Joel Diaz says to him at the end of the first round, you do this all night, you win the fight. Throw them up. Every time he comes forward, you take a slide back. He's throwing short every time. You are blocking the left really good. When he gets a little aggressive, all you have to do is get travels, champ. Get your blanket handle. That's it. Understand at the end of the first round, according to Joel Diaz, Bradley's trainer, Bradley was doing all he had to do to win the fight. Let me just tell you, after you watch that footage, I want you to watch the second round couple of things happen. At the start of the second round, Max Kellerman actually says, I'm not sure if those punches gave Manny Pacquiao the first round. Right? Kellerman's questioning what the other guys in the booth have just said. Right? Kellerman watched the first round. He's not sure if punches at the end of the round gave Manny the round. Right? What's understood with all three guys? is certainly Timothy Bradley wins at least the first two minutes of the first round. Well, in the second round, there is no doubt. The second round, Bradley starts opening up a bit. Dare I say, in the second round, he clearly wins the second round. Clearly. There's no argument about Manny Pacquiao landing punches at the end of the round to win the round. As you watch the second round, you understand just what Joel Diaz has said. That when Manny Pacquiao throws the left, Timothy Bradley is ready. Pacquiao's throwing it short. He can't get close enough to Bradley to really land the left. There's even a part of the second round where Bradley backs up Pacquiao up on the ropes. This is when Bradley has a good left ankle. This is before he sprains ligaments in his ankle. Right, the second round is clearly a Bradley round. Clearly. Well, let me just say this. Just objectively. Given the start of the fight, if I told you that the guy who won the early rounds sweeps on the judges' scorecards the later rounds of the fight, forgetting that the fighters are Bradley and Pacquiao, Let's say I call the fighters Joe and Jim. If I told you there was a rematch 
who would you tell me you would favor in the rematch? In other words, when they're healthy, one guy is looking better than the other guy. Then, of course, the guy who looked better early, somehow, with sprained ligaments, looks good at the end of the fight. Don't you think in the rematch you might be saying to yourself, you know what, that guy who had the sprained ligaments, who actually looked great when he didn't have sprained ligaments, he has a chance. Well, let me just say, of course Bradley has a chance. I'm picking Bradley to win the rematch, hedged with Pacquiao by KO. Pacquiao has a punch. He clearly does. Right? Pacquiao can knock out almost anyone. But, if this fight turns into a boxing match, Manny Pacquiao with an inaccurate right jab, with really no right hand from distance, with a left hand that's already timed by Timothy Bradley, that the more Bradley saw, the more he was able to time. Hence, you get the later rounds, right? Manny Pacquiao is going to be exposed. Right? Let me also say another thing about Timothy Bradley. You know, in the 1980s, in a different sport, basketball, Irvin Magic Johnson started getting double figures in rebounds and assists and points in the same game. So they coined a term for it. The term didn't exist before. They started calling it the triple-double. So then somebody went back in history, because at the time people were saying, wow, triple-double, what a dominant player. So some writer went back in history and thought, has anyone ever gotten a lot of triple-doubles before in NBA history? And that writer then stumbled onto the fact that a basketball player named Oscar Robertson had gone through an entire year in which he averaged a triple-double. Right? It was only then that people understood with the invention of the triple-double statistic just how dominant Oscar Robertson was. Right? We loved Oscar before then. After that fact, we understood who he was. Now, Timothy Bradley, I'm not sure if I've ever encountered a boxer who has had more of a stealth Hall of Fame career. This guy beats Devin Alexander when Devin Alexander was unbeaten since the Manny Pacquiao fight. This guy has beaten... Ruslan Provotnikov and has beaten Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Think about it. As we talk about fighters dodging other fighters, major fights not happening and stuff like that, if we're going to be honest and ask ourselves whose era is this? Understand the Bradley case. He fought Pacquiao. He beat Pacquiao, officially. Right? I believe even unofficially. He beat Pacquiao. He fought Marquez. He beat Marquez. He fought prime champion Devin Alexander. He beat Devin Alexander. Even fighters we think who are big threats right now, Ruslan Provotnikov. He beat Ruslan Provotnikov at a minimum, concede that he's been fighting championship-level opponents. Then exhale and realize that he's still unbeaten. I think the public has this wrong. I think they're overlooking the dominant fighter in this fight. I think Timothy Bradley, at this stage, should be considered the favorite I'm sure he won't be because of the folklore. So I like Timothy Bradley here. 
hedged with Pacquiao by KO. But to the gamblers, let me say, be careful. Because this is boxing. You and I know how this works. <coughs> Fan sentiment out there is for Manny Pacquiao. Just as people like Ken Norton and Ernie Shavers and Jimmy Young found out against Ali in the 1970s. Right? Close fights, not even ties, but close fights tend to go to the charismatic fighter with crowd approval. So let me just say, this video isn't on who's awarded the decision. This video is on who actually wins the fight. I expect Timothy Bradley, if it goes a distance, to win at least seven rounds. If you're a gambler, just understand that even if Bradley wins seven rounds, the judges might not give him the seven. I might be back here making a rubber match video. Food for thought. I think Bradley beats Pacquiao. That's what I'm expecting here again. I think it really does come down to Bradley having solved Pacquiao's puzzle. Knowing that he can come forward with a jab, take a step back when Manny Pacquiao throws a straight right hand, come back, smother Pacquiao, back him up, take away his mobility, and then back away and roll with Pacquiao straight left. Let me hear from you. I think the secret to this fight is what Pacquiao's trainer Joel Diaz tells him right after the first round, a round in which I believe Bradley won. I believe Bradley wins the second round. I believe even a cynical eye looking at the first fight would have to give Bradley at least five rounds. Let me just say, the first round proceeds in such a way that his trainer is telling him, give us more of the same. I like Bradley here. I think he's the underrated fighter. I think between these two, if anyone can improve their performance on the first fight, it's the guy who had sprained ligaments fight night who actually swept the later rounds. And that's Timothy Bradley. I would hedge it with Pacquiao by KO. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.